there certainly are people that take exercise far beyond what it's meant to be, like you said, but then it does seem like there's a lot of benefits to it. You know, like what, what happens if you know, as Christians, we eventually have to like go live a life on the run. Tim, the question for today's episode is should men exercise? Yeah, I think most people for most of my life would probably have answered this question with just an obvious kind of duh, you know, kind of, <laughs> kind of response to it. So, I mean, you know, you ask a question like that, should, you know, men exercise, should people exercise in general? However you're asking it, I think most people would just kind of think that that would probably go without saying that most people should probably exercise um, in general. But then it seems like one of those things right now that I don't know that most people, their intuitions are trained that way anymore. So it seems like it in the minds of many people, this kind of question is a lot more complicated um, than it seems to be on the surface of it. Is that your experience? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people who, you know, if you were to say like, Hey, it's a good idea to exercise. They're, they're kind of like, they get, they get very defensive very quickly basically. Um, yeah. I mean, some of that's the body positivity stuff, like in general, but that influences women more than it influences men. But then there's a lot of men out there that just seem to respond primarily, you know, to questions like that through the language of offense. And that's kind of strange, you know? So yeah. Yeah. That, that's definitely kind of strange to think that men are responding to this kind of question with, you know, primarily through the lens of offense. But then on the other hand, I mean, I think a lot of people have some sort of intuitive sense that they should probably try a little bit more than what they're trying and it doesn't hurt to get in shape. And there's all, you know, health benefits to getting in shape and everything else to where, you know, it decreases your risk of heart attacks and, you know, strokes and all that. And so, I mean, I think overwhelmingly obvious, yeah, I mean, it would probably be a good idea for most people to at least get some sort of aerobic exercise. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, especially... Especially given how much free time most people have, it seems like a it seems like a good investment to like at least go you know walk around the park for thirty minutes or something, <laughs> right? Sure, yeah. So I mean, instantaneously, I, I guess with the rise of like social media and the internet and everything else, I think most people when they hear this sort of thing, they instantaneously um, like hear you know for some you know bizarre reason that that if you were to say, yeah, I mean, people should probably exercise a little bit, then, um, then they hear like that you're putting upon them some sort of demand to be some sort of like Instagram model or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's typically the girly response to that kind of thing to say, you know, I, you know, I'm sorry, I'm never going to be an Instagram model or whatever, you know, that kind of thing, uh, which is a real, real defensive, real sensitive kind of response. But then on the other end, like men do the same kind of thing. They may not word it quite like that, but like instantaneously they get kind of high and mighty and get kind of offended. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, first Peter four, eight says that while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also the life to come. So, you know, many people are reading that kind of verse and they're reading that as if it's saying bodily training is of no value. Right. right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and godliness is of value in every way. And so there's this kind of like a very, um, sharp, um, disjunct between, you know, godliness and bodily training where, I mean, the point of the passage is to say that bodily training is of some value. And so you might want to, you might not want to minimize that value. And I mean, certainly like we're living in a different society right now. So we're living in a sedentary society where most people, you know, most, um, you know, middle-class kind of people are working, um, jobs that require them to sit for long hours. And so you have that, plus you have like probably one of the most unhealthy diets in the history of the world. And then all of that is kind of conspiring to people, you know, gaining weight essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then, you know, a a lot of it is diet related. So like meaning like you, if you eat the most unhealthy diet in the history of the world, uh, you know, you're going to gain weight. And so a lot of people, like they try to exercise a little bit and they realize that it's not really doing anything. So they give up on that. And, you know, most of it's probably you know, diet and what they're drinking. And I'd say like most people, like if they would just switch away from you know, the sugar drinks, they would lose a lot, a lot of weight and they wouldn't be like near as uh, morbidly obese as what they are. But 
you know, just taking this topic as a whole, trying to answer that question. I mean, you know, David talks about that he makes his arm strong for war. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it talks about, you know, being able to bend a bow of bronze and that kind of thing. And so, I mean, I, I don't think there's any value in weakness. And, you know, I think in our society right now, a lot of the situations where men are in that, that, that require them to be protectors and providers uh, are protectors in general, you know, of people like particularly weak people. I think most men are not put in those kind of situations on a regular basis. Yeah. And so they're they're looking to like the government to be that for them. So if there's any kind of difficult thing that um, happens, they're instantaneously predisposed to call the police or whatever. And, and, but I mean, I think if you, if you do keep yourself in reasonable shape, like there's something about that, that puts you in a better position. Like it gives you confidence to put you in a better position that like, if there is danger that requires some sort of physical response, then you're ready to respond. Right. right yeah. And so I, th I think the standard, <laughs> the standard kind of guy today, like if he encounters a situation like that, his instantaneous impulse is because he probably hasn't taken care of himself because he doesn't have a lot, a whole lot of self-confidence because he totally let him get self go in certain ways. The standard kind of impulse is to pull out your phone and then record it or something like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just be a bystander <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I, and I was kind of in a situation like this, like this past week where I saw, um, a guy downtown being attacked by a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm laughing because it was obviously a pit bull that was attacking this guy, but I mean, the guy was We've being, done an episode on that. There's <laughs> <laughs> a guy being attacked by a pit bull downtown and, um, you know, I, I pulled the van over and I thought I need to go help. Right. And so as I was about to go get out of the van to go help the owner of the dog kind of got him away and then drove off. And then I'm pulling out my phone, trying to take a picture. So maybe if I would have taken like the metrosexual approach to not help, I could have gotten like a picture of the whole yeah, thing. If you had but, posted it to world star, they, they might yeah, be tracking the guy down. Right. At, they might right be now. tracking him now. <laughs> I mean, but the poor guy on the other hand, man, he got like, bit by this stupid dog. Uh, but you know, I, I think most people, they don't have some sort of impulse to go and help, you know, and a lot of it's because they're just, man, they're just, they're, you know, those situations, they don't come up often, but they come up enough and you should be ready to go. And so I think, you know, there's a lot of reasons why exercising would be a good thing. Just taking care of yourself, taking care of the body you've given God's given you, he's given you, um, you like, if you know that you're embodied, you know, that, I mean, there's obviously a sense in which like, you know, whenever it's your time to go, it's your time to go, but God uses means to accomplish his ends and just keeping yourself in reasonable shape. You, you know, you might not die of a heart attack at 40 or something, you know, my, 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 um, wife's her, her dad, he died of a heart attack when he was in his mid forties and, or mid to late forties. And, you know, he didn't take care of himself very well. And so, I mean, like if you, if you think about things like that, if you just keep yourself in reasonable proportion, and keep yourself reasonably strong it could be that yeah i mean you you know god might use that uh, as a means of extending your life <laughs> right a lot longer right. than otherwise so i mean there's things you can do that just like take a you know um take this body that's god's given you and just kind of throw it throw it in the trash and i don't think christians should do that i think we should you know be somewhat conscious but at the same time you have to keep these things in perspective and you know that you know, whenever it's your time to go, it's your time to go, no matter how well you exercise. And, you know, a lot of people like they make idols out of these things on the other end, you know? Sure. So, you know, I have relatives who died in their early forties when they tried their whole life to be healthy too, you know, get cancer and die. So like, it's just, it's, um, it's not a guarantee that you're going to live till you're 90. It's not a guarantee, but yeah, but, but on balance of probability, I mean, why wouldn't you want to do the things necessary to keep yourself in shape? Right. And particularly if you're a man, you have a job to, kind of protect people who are weak. And if you want to put yourself in the worst position possible where, you know, I mean, basically you're out of breath after you run a, a couple steps or, you know, if you try to run a few steps, you may be in danger of spraining your ankle <laughs> uh, and falling and tripping and <laughs> run 10 steps and you're out of breath already. <laughs> you're done. You're done. Yeah. I mean, so you might want to put yourself in the best kind of situation to, you know, not have to be dependent on other men to be the men for you, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I would say keeping yourself in some sort of shape is good. Yeah, there's def there's definitely some wisdom there, and you know, yeah, my my grandparents were um, 
a similar way where they, they didn't really take care of themselves. And then one of the, you know, one of, one of the unfortunate aspects of that is, um, my grandfather didn't get to live long enough to see his great grandchildren because, because, you know, they ate a really, they ate a really poor diet, but diet was a, a big part of it. But then they also were extremely sedentary at the same time. And so because of that, um, and, and some other stuff that was probably out of their, out of, uh, his control, but you know, it's, it's the lack of exercise, the lack of really taking care of his body. It led to, you know, consequences that you're not thinking about when you're 30 and when you're 20, when you're 40, um, even in your teens. And, and there certainly are people that take exercise far beyond what it's meant to be, like you said, but then it does seem like there's a lot of benefits to it. You know, like what what happens if you know, as Christians we eventually have to like go live a life on the run, right? And you and you have a family, and it's like you're the you're the guy who gets winded going up a flight of stairs. Then you know you're you're not gonna you're probably not gonna fare too well. <laughs> right. So what's funny about yeah? So uh, you know what's funny about these kind of things is that like typically people they apply the wrong part of this kind of verse to their situation okay Mm -hmm. so meaning like you know for while bodily training is of some value godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise to the present life and also to the life to come like what typically happens is and and this happens like with both genders in different ways um but you know like like there (laughs) there are situations where like if i were to use a female analogy or something like this like you know, there's all these mommy blogs out there where ladies are basically um, not really taking care of their home very well. Yeah. And then, like, they all, like, you know, they post pictures of, like, their house just being an utter ruin, utter mess or whatever. And then all the girls come along, like, you know, all their friends come along and basically, you know, encourage them and say, you know, like, uh, God, you know, like – you know, God's not expecting us to be perfect and that kind of thing. Right. And you don't have to be a perfectionist and we don't want to be self-righteous and we don't want to be legalist and, you know, all that stuff. And, and it's just in like, and then, you know, the girl will write the blog and then what she's writing is about like her struggles with perfectionism and all that. Uh (laughs) (laughs) And And sometimes she just has to like, let it go, you know, to show that she's not being a perfectionist. It's like, but this is, this is like sloth, right? (laughs) (laughs) Could you imagine saying that at your job? (laughs) uh, Sorry, I didn't get that report in. I wanted to make sure I wasn't giving in to my my <laughs> tendency to perf- tendency. Yeah, be a perfectionist. Yeah. All right. So, but like there's some ladies though, who like, you know, I've known some ladies who like, they have a list of like housework that is like, you know, four pages of housework, you know, uh, things they have to do every day, you know, including like hand scrubbing the floors with their toothbrush or something like that. Right. And so th- there are those kind of women uh, who they need to hear the don't be perfectionist kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And then on the other side, like the ladies who like their house is a mess and they're posting pictures of it on Instagram Instagram and all that. And like they're not the perfectionists. They don't need to hear that message. They need to hear the like go to the ant you sluggard kind of message. Right. Yeah. And so but the same thing is happening with like the the uh, like with guys with this bodily training is of some value kind of thing. It's like, you know, like the <laughs> there is a kind of guy who like is so obsessed with working out that, you know, he's working out three, you know, three hours a day or whatever. Like there is that kind of guy who is just, um, you know, beating himself, raking himself over the coals. If he gained a few pounds or whatever, one else. bicep like, is larger than the other bicep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so there, there are guys like that, but I mean, those are very rare and like the vast majority of American men are not that right. And so like just talking about gaining like the discipline necessary to maybe, you know, walk for 20 minutes a day or something like that. Most, most men are not even like anywhere near that having that kind of, like so their problem is a lack of discipline their problem is not that they're pre- perfectionist right, right. <laughs> and so then you don't basically like comfort yourself with the uh, like don't be a for perfectionist kind of stuff like when your problem is a lack of discipline right so bodily dis- bodily training bodily discipline is of some value godliness is of value in every way so what you're not doing like 
So you have a lot of guys who are basically saying, you know, it's of no value. And then they're comforting themselves because they have no discipline and they're not have like no man despises his own flesh except for basically all Amer- Americans, right? <laughs> but nourishes it and cherishes it, right? So you, you basically, like you want to apply the right message to the right situation. And like, you know, most guys are probably not like, you know, fitness guru freaks who are, you know, obsessed with all of these things. Like they're, most of them just need to gain some discipline. They, they have like the lack of discipline problems. And then on the other end, you know, yeah, sure. I mean, like, you, you know, you're not going to die if you eat a cheeseburger once or something like that, right? <laughs> right, right. So, so basically, yeah, yeah, it's of some value, sure. Okay, fair enough. This has been another episode of Bible Bashed. We hope you have been encouraged and blessed through our discussion. We thank you for all your support and ask you to continue to like and subscribe to Bible Bashed and share our podcast with your friends and on social media. Please reach out to us with your questions, pushback, and potential topics for us to discuss in future episodes at BibleBashedPodcast at gmail.com and consider supporting us through Patreon. If you would like to be Bible Bashed personally, then please know that we also offer free biblical counseling, which you can take advantage of by emailing us. Now, go boldly and obey the truth in the midst of a biblically illiterate world who will be perpetually offended by your every move.